Reading with your kids. Hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, machaba, monu mui wanji, namaste, jambo. Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jen Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so happy and so honored that you join us in our mission to help all families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to tell all of your family and friends about the show. And please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is Jay De La Vega. She is here to help us kick off Hispanic Heritage Month and to celebrate her brand new book, Huepa. Before we invite Jay into the studio, we want to let you know that this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by The Books by Yobi Q. Yobi Q is absolutely one of my favorite guests here on the podcast. Through her many visits to the show, I've learned that Yobi began her career as a preschool teacher during her junior year in college. As an educator, she taught kids and their families to embrace and love diverse cultures. Since leaving the classroom, she's dedicated herself to writing children's books featuring Asian characters and cultures, helping kids like her wonderful daughter feel seen, heard, and represented. You're going to love the books by Yobi Q. Books like I Am an Amazing Asian Girl, I Am a Bold Asian Boy, and of course her debut children's book, Our Lunar New Year, Celebrating Lunar New Year in Asian Communities. One of the things I loved about that book is that it acknowledged that the Lunar year, New Year is a wonderful holiday that is celebrated in many different ways throughout the many diverse Asian communities that exist. Yobi's even created her very own board game called Guess the Asian Food. You you have to check out her website. It's buyyobiq.com. B-Y-Y-O-B-E-Q-I-U.com. And discover all of Yobi's wonderfulness for yourself. This episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is also sponsored by The Journey of an Acorn, the award-winning children's book written by Corey Wolf. This sweet little book has received four independent publishing awards and was named by the Independent Book Publishing Professionals Group as one of the best indie books of 2020. It's a tale packed with powerful messages, Messages that you want your kids to embrace, like learning to forgive so that you can continue to grow, and learning that everything you need to become great is already within you, and you can guide future generations so they can awaken the greatness inside of them. This children's tale might be a quick read, but its message of boldly forging your own way in the world and helping others along the way is timeless for readers of any age. Rich with evocative imagery, this is a charming and well-penned fable that can be read again and again. You and your kids are going to love it. It's The Journey of an Acorn by Corey Wolf. Join us right now from Southern California. Our guest is returning to the show to celebrate. Her brand new book is called Wepa. Please welcome back our friend, Jay De La Vega. Hey, Jay, how are you? Hello, hello. I am so happy to be here. I am tired. (laughs) (laughs) Jay is joining us right after she brought her kids to school. So like so many of the other moms and dads out there, she is uh, an author, but her first and uh, primary job is being a parent. And uh, and that's awesome, but it's also exhausting. Oh, so exhausting. <laughs> so tired all the time. So <laughs> tell us all about WEPA. Okay, so when I was writing um, one of my books, Annalise and the Special Dish, which is actually coming out next year, um, 
I got so frustrated with the process of submitting and submitting because before I was self-publishing and I wasn't really used to the process of rejection. So one day I, um, after another rejection letter, I sat down and I wrote WEPA in 15 minutes. And um, when I came back to it, I was like, wow, this is actually the book I wish I had as a kid you know the girl she was just too much for the world and she had too much excitement and she was full of life and full of energy and not everybody could deal with that um so i went back i edited it and oddly enough one of the editors from little libro saw my artwork for the book on instagram reached out to me we had a meeting and that was that it, we just clicked and it really came together well that is wonderful that is really exciting it's it's kind of like one of those dreams come true you know we always used to hear the story of i don't know if it was marilyn monroe but one of those bombshells being at a lunch counter and an agent just kind of walks in and go i'm gonna make you a movie star um <laughs> And I guess in the days of social media, you are proving this to be true, that sometimes you can share something on social media, catch the eye of a, of, of a publisher, and they come to you saying, hey, we'd like to do something with this. Yeah, I mean, it was absolutely lucky because um, my editor at the time, she didn't even know the artwork was to the book. And I had just submitted to that publishing company because they had just opened for submission that week. So she had no idea that I had already tried to submit to the company and she had no idea that the artwork was for WEPA. She just fell in love with it and after meeting we just we really clicked and she really understood the energy and the vibe I was trying to put behind my story. So it just, it really worked out. It was really a really lucky moment. So let's talk a little bit more uh, about this story. You said that this is a, a story about a girl who has too much WEPA. And if you ever travel to the beautiful island of Puerto Rico, you might have heard that word um, usually pronounced more like WEPA. But, you know, uh, but if you haven't and you're not familiar with the word, you might be thinking to yourself, WEPA, what, is, what are you talking about? Yeah, so WEPA normally doesn't have an English translation. It's something that you say like, Yahoo or Yeehaw, something like that, you know. Mm -hmm. But what I did was I flipped the word on its head and I said, WEPA is your energy. It's your magic. And Mia, in the story, she just so happens to have ADHD. And everyone's always telling her, oh, she's too messy, she's too loud, she's too busy. And her grandmother turns around and says, nah, she just has too much WEPA. And so Mia rolls with this. You know, she, she loves her WEPA. She loves how much life it gives her. And even though sometimes it, it makes her, it, it gives her mistakes sometimes, you know, um, she still loves who she is. And as we see through the story, she, she makes mistakes. She goes to ballet class and she gets kicked out and she becomes unsure about herself. If she's supposed to just fit in or can she express this WEPA? Can she be herself? And ultimately, it, it it doesn't give you a straight, clear answer. Mm -hmm. you know? it, it's not a, this is what you should do. You should find appropriate places to act. You know, it's about finding the people who can meet you where you are. You know, it's about being surrounded with people that will support you and uplift you. That way you can shine and be your best self. You know, she's a kid. Yeah. She's not going to always know the appropriate thing to do at the right time. And, you know, I, I, I don't need to preach to children, mm -hmm. you know.
Mm-hmm. They're still figuring it out, and yeah. so is Mia. Yeah. So, I like that it it brings to mind um, my son's journey when when he was young. He was you know he started school in a little neighborhood Catholic school, and so they knew him from kindergarten, and they knew that he had a lot of extra energy, and they were all cool with that. And so he kind of moved through kindergarten through sixth grade uh, really well and with friends and um, doing well in school, and everybody just knew that 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 was Chris. And then, unfortunately, that that school closed, and we moved on to a a different uh, Catholic school in a neighboring suburb, and suddenly there was a problem. And these new teachers didn't know Chris and his extra energy, and it wasn't welcome. And in fact, it was pretty scary to them. And suddenly, there, you know, there are all these professionals who cared about kids who were telling me, oh, he needs to be medicated and all these other things. It brings to mind the fact that, you know, um, I kind of what you were talking about is, you know, what's right the right the right way to behave kind of depends on where you are and who you're with yeah it the, the i think the the biggest issue especially with adhd because i have add and my kids and my husband have adhd um and sometimes they overwhelm me you know but i know that their actions are not intentional it's who they are and I think that as a society sometimes we expect children to act like adults and when they're neurodivergent we put even more stress on them instead of meeting that child where they're at and okay well you know my daughter she likes to spin around and spin so I put her in dance class you know my son he's very big on fidgeting i put a screwdriver in his hand and he started building computers you know like we have to meet our children where they are and instead of focusing on what they're not doing because we can't expect children to act like adults we need to focus on how to take that energy and put it into something positive that will make them feel good about themselves that will make them learn the the skills necessary so when they're adults they can be successful yeah so yeah no i i absolutely agree i think that we're way too as as a culture as a society at least here in the states i think we're way too quick to throw labels on kids and and throw medications at kids and um and and when we labels, I think I think they're well meaning. You know, it's like oh, this kid learns in this style. You know, but unfortunately, labels, while they there there may have been a good intention behind them, I think what it what what people see when they see a label on a kid is they 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 start to see what kids can't do. Yeah. Instead of saying, "Oh, this is something to help you help your help the kid reach their full potential," it's like, "Oh, this label tells me this kid's going to be a problem, yeah. and these are the problems I have to look for and kind of squash." And that's not helpful to anybody. Exactly, like a label is not a person; mm-hmm. it's not the whole picture. That's why when I when I tell people. I I tell them, you know, yeah, my kid who happens to have ADHD, because that is not all of who they are. It's not all of um, what they encompass. Like, yeah, they have hyper focus on things that interest them and, and they tend to forget the world around them. We work on that. We figure out ways around them, you know, putting a little timer on the phone so they don't get away from themselves. It just means we have to adapt to who they are again meeting the child where they're at and i feel like regular um 
learning styles and regular space, just normal spaces. We expect this certain amount of structure um, from children that is just, it's not logical. Their mm -hmm. brains are not made that way. You know, even a child that that isn't neurodivergent, their brains are not built that way. They're not built to learn or to to talk or any of the things we expect to them from them mm -hmm. you know and really i feel like we're not a child friendly country i think it's hard to argue that you know um you know you were talking about normal situations being in a classroom being sitting at a desk for five or six hours a day and the desks are all lined up in a row. That ain't normal. That, you know, it, it might be the norm. It might have been something that, that we've come to expect kids to be able to do, but we've only come to expect kids to be able to do that in the last couple of generations. We're talking maybe a hundred years. We're not talking about all of humankind. This is not the way the kids yeah. have learned. Absolutely. I actually started with school and um, that wasn't how school was taught. We had an open classroom and there was a lot of hands-on learning. There was cooking involved in kindergarten and it ended up not being the right fit for her. Um, just structurally, it, she was coming home crying every day. Mm -hmm. And I knew that there had to be a change. So we ended up putting her in a art and music school. And now she's blossomed, you know. She is in a school environment where it's a little less structured, a ton of playtime, playtime in the morning, the afternoon. And then I think they have three or four recesses a day. You know, the kids put on programs all the time um, they all have music um it, it's just there's so much more room for self-expression and there's smaller classrooms and and more attention and that's really what she needed and they've given her such a great support system um so not every class is going to fit every child mm -hmm. like it was a good fit for my son who liked the structure and who liked the school. But for my daughter, it just it, she was really hurting, mm -hmm. really hurting. So we were lucky enough to be able to put her in an art school and allow her to be herself. Yeah, that's great. That's great. I'm really happy that you, and, that you found that place for her and that she's thriving there. Yeah. Yeah. So t talk a little bit about your, your journey as a writer. You are saying that you had been, you know, Wipe Academy came about because you re received that rejection letter after being a self-published author and now trying to go a traditional route and now suddenly experiencing what every author needs to be ready to experience, which is hundreds of rejections. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's just the reality. Um and, and and this came. It, what do you think? What it was that, um, you, you know, that kind of that that rejection somehow planted this seed that grew so quickly to that that create that you know grew into WEPA? You know what? I'm gonna say something a little controversial, but spite can be useful. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate to that, actually. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when I was in college, I got my first C. <laughs> and ever since then, I've been trying to pr prove that professor <laughs> wrong, <laughs> that I'm a good writer. <laughs> you know, and with each rejection, I'm like, no, no, I know what I have. I know it's special. And again, the success and momentum of WEPA was totally luck totally luck you know like obviously there is skill involved i do know how to draw i do know how to write 
Um, but it was luck that this just happened to be the right moment. Mm -hmm. And it's really taken off. It's been such an amazing, fortunate experience. Um, my book was selected to be in Kohl's and it was selected to be in Target. It got a starred review from the school library journal. Um, every like small indie bookstore I've been reaching out to because that's been my big focus. Uh, that has been positive response. They've been buying my books. Uh, libraries are loving it. Like it's just been such a positive experience and it happened what felt like in such a short amount of time. But in reality, you know, <laughs> I've been doing this since 2015. <laughs> so this is what it built up to. And I think that sometimes you get used to the rejection and you expect the rejection. So when the positive does come, it can feel overwhelming. And it can feel like, wow, this is happening so fast. But literally, you know, two years it'll make a decade of me writing and publishing so you know, it's been it's been great it's well, been tiring you, you you make a good point you make a couple of good points first that that whole idea of of spite or anger can really it 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 sounds weird um but it really can be a positive driving force for a creative i know myself there have been um Two very memorable times when somebody got me very angry um, go before I went out on stage, and I used that anger to to present some of the best shows that I've that I've ever had. Um, I hated how I felt during those shows, but I I knew they were great and the performances were great. But you also mentioned about the fact that yeah, it was spite and it kind of pushed me. But yeah, really, it was I was I was lucky, and yeah, it was fortunate and it was luck that that editor just happened to be you know scrolling on um, social media at the time when your your picture your illustration was there. But we make our own luck, you know. They're very I, I have yet to meet any writer who was just I know I'm talented. Um, but I'm just gonna lie here and wait for somebody yeah, to come, gonna, come I'm along. I'm just gonna sit around. No, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. Like there, I think uh, it was lucky for her to be on social media at that time, and especially the way social media works, where you can have 300 friends and only see 10 of their posts. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that was lucky that she saw my my art, but. Absolutely, absolutely agree. I put in the work. Mm -hmm. I put in the work. I drew every day. I put myself out there every day. And that's definitely something that authors need to do. Um, a lot of authors I know, and I've been so fortunate to meet so many amazing authors since being published. Um, they're very like, anti-social butterflies <laughs> so so you know people that I'm literally looking up to I'm like oh my gosh you're so amazing you just won this award and they're messaging me like how did you do that like I talk to people mm -hmm. I talk to people I take chances and I think authors need to to learn to do that to take more chances to socialize and to just shoot your shot because no one's going to know if you don't ask. And the worst thing they can say is no. Mm -hmm. And if they say no, you didn't lose anything. You didn't have it yesterday. So what difference does it make today? Yeah. yeah. And so. these are things that we tell our kids as they're growing up and they go, Hey, you know, you, you want to go to a great school yeah, you maybe you're going to get a better education at that grade school, but you're definitely going to be part of a better network. And that's where the opportunity is going to come from, from your network and get out there and shoot your shot. And if you're on the on the soccer field, you're on a basketball court, you know, 100% of the shots that you don't take, 
I'm not going to go in. And the same is true. But but somehow, when we become, a, we start thinking of ourselves as a creative, we forget that. And we think that, oh, no, we're creative. Our, someone should just come along and, and magically discover our creativity and our art. And um, that, it doesn't work like that. We're Art still exists in the real world. The real world <laughs> exists, you know, and you got to network. You got to go out there and you got to you got to do it, it. I I like to say this, and it was a, a lesson that that somebody taught me when I started my career um, on stage. Um, whether you're on stage, whether you're writing a book, you're writing plays, whatever, you're part of show business. A book is a part of show business. In show business, it's two words: show and business. And business is the bigger of the two words. And if you don't take care of business, there ain't gonna be a show. So. That that really was a, a very helpful message for me to hear 30-something years ago, and hopefully it will help. Uh, it's something that you've learned, and hopefully it's something that uh, an aspiring author who's listening to this is going to hear from both of us. Well, I think that a lot of authors think that their writing or their art is the product and not realizing that they are also the product. You know, people have to want to talk to you. People have to want to read what you have to say. You can write a beautiful book, but, you know, if if you don't do great with people, people might not hear about it. It can just be in the back burner for a long time. So definitely need to put yourself out there. Need to just, if it feels uncomfortable and scary, then that's your goal. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't feel scary, your goal is not big enough. Yeah. Yeah. Reach a little higher. Well, we are really, really glad that you've been reaching higher. You've been, this is your third visit to the podcast and we're so excited about your, your success. I know you have a number of books coming out next year um, that are being traditionally published and what a great journey from self publishing to traditional publishing. And, and that's awesome. Um, where can people go, Jay, to find out more about you and find out more about WEPA? Okay, so if they want to find out more about me, they can go to my Instagram at at, <laughs> at author J de la Vega or author J de la Vega dot com. If they like any of my books, you can purchase them wherever books are sold, especially Kohl's and Target this fall. That's wonderful. Or request it at your local library. Support your local library. Absolutely. Absolutely. Can't buy it, just request it. Yep. And even if you can buy it, still request it because you can say to them, hey, I got this book. It's awesome. I know the rest of the community are going to love it. So you should get it and bring it to the uh, to the library. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so they can find me there. I'm always not, I'm not always on social media. <laughs> <laughs> a little more than I should be but they can always find me there and they can always reach out and ask a question I actually started a private chat on Instagram where they can ask me questions about publishing and being an author and I love to share knowledge we've had a great time speaking to the br- author of WEPA the latest book from our friend Jay De La Vega Jay, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Jen de Oliveira. She'll be here to celebrate Reggie Kid Penguin. That's the next episode of the podcast. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, we'll start by thanking our guest, Jay de la Vega. Please be sure to check out WEPA. I also want to thank our sponsors, The Journey of an Acorn, the award-winning book written by Corey Wolf. We also want to thank Yobi Q, and we want you to check out her website, buyyobiq.com, to discover all the wonderful, empowering books that she has written. Books like I Am an Amazing Asian Girl, I Am a Bold Asian Boy, And, of course, her debut children's book, Our Lunar New Year. 
celebrating Lunar New Year in Asian communities. I want to thank my team, Fatima Khan, Rory Grady, Ann O'Leary, Soji Franklin. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.